Hello everybody and welcome to your 38th Allegro 5 tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to be learning about joysticks and controllers, okay? So, uh, whenever we're using controllers or joysticks or any external device used uh, for movement or whatever in our game, uh, it is representing, uh, represented by a joystick uh, in Allegro, okay? So, uh, what we want to do First of all, before we even use a joystick, we need to install the joystick, okay? So, AL install joystick. And if you're wondering about where this code is taken from, it's taken from the last, the previous tutorial. Okay, so, uh, to, to be honest, we don't need to, uh, when we, when we create a joystick, uh, much like the keyboard, we don't have to make an, an instance of the keyboard. Uh, so, let's get rid of this uh, code right here right now. So first I'm going to be showing you how to handle joystick events and then we're going to get into uh, how to do like a real time joystick input. Okay. So uh, first of all, uh, there's there's different, there's four different event types for Allegro. There's Allegro event joystick button down, button up, uh, axis and configuration. Okay, so button down is obvious if they press a button down or uh, whatever, uh, it detects that and if they uh, press a button and they release it, then that's for button up. So first of all, I included the IO stream at the top, the program, I included the IO stream, and what we're going to do is we're going to use that to display to our console window or where our joystick is set up. Now, uh, I'm for my joystick, I'm using my PS3 controller. Now, if you have... Uh, PS3 or Xbox 360 controller, then you can download something called Motion Joy, and um, with Motion Joy, you'll be able to uh, configure your controller to make it kind of like a gamepad, and you can set it for different things. You can make it a mouse button, or whatever. But I set it to gamepad, and I set the different gamepad buttons and stuff I'd want, right? So if I press this right here, I run this program. Oh, uh, there's some things I forgot to erase. Hopefully, that's it. Nope. Okay, I got to get rid of this code right here. Okay, so let's try this one last time. Okay, so uh, don't worry about the map right here. C focus on the console window right here. Okay, so I'm when I press a different button, button we see uh, the the button that we press, the number button that we press. So for example, when I press the X button, I see the number two. Uh, when I press the triangle button, I see the number zero, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. But notice that uh, when I press a triangle button, it's set to button one, right? But think of these as like when when you put in a button, they're stored in an array, okay? So button one is indeed in the array index zero. So when we press button one, where um the identity of that is zero, and that's gonna be important when we get into real time input uh with this stuff, okay? So uh, let me close this down. And let me close the game window. Okay, so we got that. We we know how to detect button presses, and uh, it's good that we know how to detect button presses. For example, say uh, you have a option screen where they can change the configuration of their buttons or whatever for your game. Uh, to say you want them to, if they want to change their movement or change the control the output, then you could uh, detect what button they press and then change it to. Uh, change the new button that you're detecting for input to that new button they inputted. Anyways, uh, so now we're just going to be checking for axis uh, input. And uh, I said, okay, for the SCDCL, I said events axis position. The reason being is that uh, for, for, oh, where's the program I had open? Oh, I don't know where I, where I put it. Okay, so anyways, I put it for that uh, in Motion Joy that I I set it so that the X and Y axis axes right here. So this is X positive and this is X negative. So that axis my, I think is represented by the number zero. So if we if we print out uh, 
events.joystick axis. Whenever we press the left or right button, we're going to get one number, and if we press the up or down button, we're going to get the next number. But we want to distinguish them, distinguish them differently, okay? So that's why we do uh, joystick position. So if we go, if I go into motion joy right now, uh, I see that this is uh, right is positive, left is negative, and down is positive, and up is negative, okay? And you can just configure it around any way you want. So if I go right here in my program, uh, uh, when you see the screen, okay, so when I press the right button, we get a positive number, right? And when I let go, the number is just zero, meaning that it's stationary, nothing is being pressed. When I press the left button, I get a negative number because it's an X negative, so we know it's a negative number. And then when I press the up button, we get a negative number, and when I press the down button, we get a positive number. Okay, so then in your game, for example, if you want to, if you were detecting uh, a certain axis, you could say like, uh, let me change the axis right now, just to show you something. So, so let me change the axis, and we run the program. So when I press when I press down or up I get one and when I press left or right I get zero. So if you're running a game or whatever and you want to detect left and right movement, you can say if axis is equal to zero and the uh, position is equal to uh, the position is less than zero, therefore you know they're moving left. And you say if axis is equal to zero and the uh, position is greater than zero, then you know they're moving right, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay. So now we learn how to detect axis um, input. So now it's time to get into uh, some some real time input. Okay. Uh, so if we go to uh, what we need to do is we need to create a, a joystick, right? Allegro joystick, and uh, we make a pointer and we do al get joystick, and just like arrays, they go from zero, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So since I only have one joystick. I said the, the joystick ID is zero, okay? And then we create a joystick state. And I forgot to mention, uh, just for like the joysticks, don't forget to register the event source. Uh, yeah, but that sh you guys should know that. Uh, so what I'm going to print out here to the screen is the number of buttons that the joystick has. And uh, this is just the number of joysticks we currently have. And that, should, that's, that value is one, okay? So just with just like with a real time keyboard state, we need to get the joystick state. Uh, we put the joystick in there, and then we uh, we store the current joystick state in the in the joystick variable. So uh, this is uh, it's sort of different uh, than the uh, the get key state, the keyboard getting the keyboard's key state. Uh, when we get the keyboard's key state, all we store is the the value into this key um, into this key state. What uh what AL get joystick state does is that it stores it kind of takes a snapshot from that joystick and puts it into uh, this. Since there's different uh, joysticks and stuff like that, you you're only going to use one keyboard in the game, but you can use multiple. Uh, you can use multiple joysticks in the game, right? So then that's why you have to specify which joystick ID you're trying to get from, and then it's storing that snapshot into the joy, um, into our into our joystick state. So what we're gonna do is that we say that if events uh, that that uh, equals to the timer, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say if joy state dot button dot button one. And then we uh, we're gonna redraw the map. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing as we did the last tutorial. So what is button one? Well, remember as I was saying that they stored as an array. So if we go right here, uh, button one is gonna be uh, in the array uh, zero, and button two is gonna be in the array uh, in the array one. So when I press the circle key, when I change the map, it's gonna reload the map whenever I press the circle key. So just to show you guys, so you guys don't think I'm lying. So we have our map file right here, and I'm going to go and change, where's the map file? Okay, I'm going to go and change uh, the map a bit. Okay, so I changed the map. Let's go back to our program. So now I am pressing a whole bunch of buttons. 
I don't know if you can hear me pressing buttons, but I'm pressing a whole bunch of buttons on my controller. When I click circle, we see the map change, okay? Uh, so that's how you can get real-time input with your with your buttons. Okay, so as for, uh, we, we learned about, we know about buttons. So as for the axes, uh, if we do that, we see, we see a stick. And uh, for those of you who don't know what a stick is, basically, uh, it's kind of like which axis, kind of like which analog stick you're using, right? Uh, so I don't know uh, fully. I don't know like to the fullest extent on how it's used, but uh, basically I noticed that when I set this to like uh, uh, this the this the regular direction, and I set this to like uh, R X or whatever, blah blah blah. So if I set this to R X positive. Or whatever so this will like this will signify the right stick and this will uh, signify the first stick right uh, so for example so what I need to do I say is stick zero and then after when we do that we see an axis so I believe zeros of uh, the x-axis one is the y-axis and I believe that two would be the z-axis so if we want to check for uh, the uh, if we, if we want to check for the left axis, instead of doing this stuff, we're going to uh, draw to the screen to see what we get. So we're going to say joy state dot stick axis zero and end the line. So let me run this program. Uh, so if I press right on the analog or left on the analog. Or yeah, any of if I press like right on the D pad or left on the D pad, we get a value. And if I press right on the analog, we get one. If I press left, we get a negative number. If I press up, I don't know why I'm getting all those numbers when I press up. When I press down, it's maybe because not perfectly down. Yeah, but when I do it down, like when I do it towards the right side, I get towards a one value. And same when I move left, I get a negative value, right? Uh, so that is for left and right, and if I was to set the axes to to one, then it would check for uh, the y value. So it would check for up and down, uh, up and down. So it checks for both of them. Okay. So uh, yeah, we could do that. And if we want to check for the right stick, I set that to one, and I'll check for the left and right. So, I don't know why it's working for the left analog. Uh, I don't know what's going on. Well, maybe because I kind of messed up with I messed with this a bit. Uh, not really sure what I did, but just to have basic functionality with the analogs and stuff, I would just set the stick to zero and have the x-axis to zero. Uh, and the y axis for one, and then if you're using the z axis, then you use uh, the, the three for the z uh, two for the z axis. But that's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and bye.